Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. This fall, this quaint mid-19th century New England town brought to life the short stories and poems of Edgar Allan Poe. Characters from Poe's tales of horror and deception appeared when guests least expected it, seducing them into the world of obsession, passion, and revenge. Replacing the theatrical Sleepy Hollow experience which had played at the village since 2016, Phantoms and Fire offered guests a safe take on the Halloween season, following the restrictions set forth by COVID-19. We kind of created this idea over a Zoom call, and um, I've always, it's always been lingering on me. I've always wanted to tell the stories of Poe in New England, and, uh, and I, love, I love this space so much. There's so many interesting houses and, and, and towns and farms and, and places to do that. And we, we spent a couple months just planning it, casting it out of New York, and uh, it's been pretty fun. Griffith grew up in northern Connecticut and was a frequent visitor to the village as a child. This is my third or fourth project here, fourth project here, and it's just a great space. He went about the house as usual. Oh, it's an opportunity for a lot of, a lot of sensory overlap, a theater, that, like adventure theater, basically, is kind of what I call it, of just like, the audience has no idea what they're walking into, and that they're kind of thrilled by that, and it becomes a lot of word of mouth of, what did you see? What was this? Did you see that? I missed that. I arose and argued about trifles in a high key with violent gesticulations, but the noise steadily increased. Why would they not A cornerstone of the new event is Nevermore, a series of six outdoor performances that welcomes a professional cast to the village to bring to life the short stories and poems of the mid-19th century writer. The stories play out simultaneously in six different locations around the village. Sam Erdang plays Roderick, a paranoid hypochondriac haunted by the secrets of his past. DJ, actually, the director, actually messaged me and said, I wrote a role with you in mind. Uh, would you care to do this role? And he had written Roderick with me in mind, and he had written the Telltale Heart scene with Jake in mind. So he, he sort of had picked actors that he had worked with in the past and sort of had an, a preconceived notion of which actor would be best suited for which role. The bar was now four and a half inches deep in my neck. Anna Kane plays Psyche, an eccentric heiress turned like journalist who was willing to do anything to satisfy her reader's Perfect. lust for the macabre, pushing herself to the brink of spectacular death to write about it. As she's telling these stories, you're kind of thinking, maybe she actually killed all of these people? <laughs> And her manservant, Pompey, not really sure if he's still around anymore, which is perfect because they do it in front of the graveyard and the church. And in my head, the graveyard is filled with all of my old boyfriends. Psyche is not mine. I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> Alana J. Smith just did her first television role as Melissa Alden on CBS's FBI Most Wanted. She plays Evangeline at Sturbridge Village, a volatile drunk who can turn on a dime from affection to violence and back. So the piece that I do is four pages of text, which is absolutely the longest piece that I've ever had to memorize. So it was pretty daunting at first. But, uh, and I would practice it and it was going okay. And then the minute I set foot on the farm, it was like, bah, 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 bah. everything just came out and I knew it like the back of my hand because it just felt so right. The house. To come from New York City and then just be immersed in this world has been pretty magical. For many of the actors working at Old Sturbridge Village this fall, this has been their first chance to perform in front of a live audience since their industry was shut down due to the pandemic. It's not the normal time for now. Of course, our industry is basically on hold, so this is really exciting. And I I'm, I'm, would say I'm one of very few of my actor friends who have an opportunity to perform right now. Being able to do this in front of a live audience is like getting breath back in my lungs. It sounds so corny and cliche, but down the iron bar. We've been needing to do it and people have been needing to see it.